Melbourne Studio School. And so, Melbourne Studio School is a great opportunity for his students uh, to come together and show together and bring our work collaboratively. collaboratively. And uh, it's a hard thing to do, so it's a, it's a great way to do it. But, so our show is in there, but it really, I think, this is a show about Richard. Richard the artist, Richard the teacher. So yes, our work is there, but this is really Richard. So um, it's great to be here showcasing you, Richard. Um, <laughs> well, it, it is a, I think it is a showcase, because it's showcasing Melbourne Studio School. And that's your dream, that's your vision, and that's your endeavour. So, and, um, and I'm uh, greatly appreciative of this. Um, so, uh, uh, so I'll just uh, talk with uh, Richard's, uh, so Richard's CV is showing that it's clearly, clearly a collaborative person. And upon uh, leaving VCA in 1978, Richard moved into Green Street for Anne, where with a group of artists they um, set up uh, a collaborative group and eventually moved into, well not eventually, it happened fairly quickly, but a couple of years, they moved into Fitzroy and began um, Royal Gallery in the early 80s. And this is now firmly has its foot chapters of Australian art history. Um, but Richard, and he's been painting ever since. So he started teaching uh, in 1998. So, and correct me, this is uh, my memory of it, is that along with Chiara Morga, um, you set up a model of like an Italian school where artists and students can work together, learn together, and exhibit together. It's for, yeah, it's for students. So, um, and just a little detour about me, is that in 1998, <laughs> I was uh, yet again bemoaning to my long suffering market that I haven't been able to develop an art practice. But I think if my memory is a couple of days that Richard rang me and invited me to participate in his first classes. So that was in probably April of 1998. Very nervous first class. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as I say, that's history. Uh, well, for me, uh, it's about me again, just a second. <laughs> but uh, uh, it, by the end of that year, I had my first studio. By the end, and I'm rich here by the end of the year 200, but in fact it was 2000, I had my first solo show. So, and so for me, that's been, uh, I have now got a firm footprint in an established art practice, and that's, that's a big part of my life. Um, so I think this also reflects um, other experiences in the people in Melbourne Studio School. A lot of uh, the students have come along. People come and go. Some stay and some move on. They come back. So and the fact that there's a lot of people that have been for a long time, some people have come and moved out and had their own shows. Well, some of the students have gone on to, to, to study. So again, that's a measure of the uh, foundation that Richard has created in Melbourne um, Studio School. So um, I think Richard's a mentor. He's a friend. Always supporting and always encouraging. And I'd like to make a quote about what Ken Robinson, who's a mentee, he's sort of Ken Robinson, and then he writes about um, uh, innovation and being creative. And in his book, The Element, How Finding Your Passion Changes Everything, brings attention to the benefit of finding your... So this brings attention to the benefit of finding your pride. He says, tribe members can be collaborative. So I think this is what we get at Northern Studio. So it's like a tribe. And he says, and this just brings very clear crisp in my mind, tribe members can be collaborative or competitors. They can be a familiar age of a different generation. What connects a tribe is common commitment to the things that they feel born to do. He later goes on a few pages later. It's connecting with people who share the same passion affirms you're not alone. I felt that really sums up Northern Studios. So now there's a little book going around, and I don't think it's turned up tonight, but there's a, everybody's written a few things of what Northern Studios School means to them. So I can't make a quote, but I have one quote, which is from Erica. And she thinks she calls you Richard the Good. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now I want to say a few words about Richard's work. Firstly, I want to bring your attention to a famous quote by some erudite, articulate, astute young man who at another opening night of an exhibition confidently said to Richard that he thought his work was like a pizza gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and we frequently laugh at this. Funny as this may seem, I actually think that he's speaking a kind of truth. So I'm just talking about some of my musings here. Richard reflects to me, reflects to me the other day that he actually um, uh, is very primarily interested in his um, process. And that might mean different things to you. It might mean different. If you want to know what Richard would mean, you have to ask him. But for me, process is about experience. So I think what 
developing a future for them. It's a kind of experience. Um, so, uh, in our everyday minds, we employ a kind of decoding sense. Um, we look out from a window of our eyes and make sense of what, what's out there. We name things. We look at the picture like we're looking at a view. Uh, we have a word list to differentiate objects. So, it's no wonder that representational art and really realism carry sway. So when we look at imagery, it's, it's in this manner that we, we approach and we try to make uh, sense of what we view in front of us. So the Pete's comment is really a clue to the manner in which this comment came about, in that it was trying to make sense. But what you get, I think, coming into this process is, for, for me, um, uh, you know, I can't decode what Richard said and what Richard does, but for me, it's um, to try and understand is a little disappointing. If you try to stand and what's going on, you'll feel disappointed. Um, you're using the everyday mind. Uh, so I think it's incumbent upon us not to try and understand. It's an experience. You're allowed the image to have an effect on you. Um, there's always possibilities, and our sensibilities are, I think, orchestrated to experience the effects on an unconscious level. And with references to figure and landscape, we almost arrive at a representation to satisfy the everyday thinking. But it slips away into what could be there in the unfathomable cosmos. So, so there are really, these are really just my musings. So I really enjoy this poetic experience of uh, just standing in front of that. It, it happens too. Uh, so Richard, I love your work. I love where it transports me. And I love where Melbourne Studio, studio School has, taught, has transported you also.